Hi guys, Michael here again with another Renderman tutorial. This one requested from the community specifically by Ron McLeroy. I hope I'm saying your surname correctly. Uh, he wanted to know if um, I could do a tutorial about doing render passes for Renderman. Um, so uh, I just want to warn you at the top of the show uh, that I am not a compositor by trade, so I don't really know a whole heap about it, um, but I have done a little bit of it in the past, so um, I can show you what I know and hopefully that helps some people out. Uh, this is specifically going to be a workflow for Photoshop. Uh, if you're using Nuke, some of this may apply. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't use Nuke myself, so um, there may be some differences in the workflow that you might want to explore uh, elsewhere. So let's get into it. Um, I've got a scene set up as you can see um, on the left I've got a ball that's got a subsurface scattering shader applied the middle has got, just got the standard uh, Pixar Disney shader applied and on the right we've got a glass shader applied and I'll show you what that looks like rendered out um, and you'll see that I've actually also got caustics on and I talked about this in a previous uh, previous tutorial but that's basically the light uh, bouncing through the glass and then um, being uh, illuminating the surface on the opposite side normally in the shadow side um, and the reason I've got that on is because I'm going to do a separate render pass for that to turn that on you're going to want to go to your render settings go to your um, sampling for finals and allow caustics um, in this example I'll be using 64 uh, samples um, but you can use whatever you want, like obviously um, and yeah that's pretty much all the setup that's required um, so how do we do it or oh, probably a better question is why do we do it um, the reason why we, we want to do this is um, mainly to get more control out of your final image um, so you can control how much specularity there is on specific parts of it because you could go into Photoshop and erase parts or um, draw in parts on layers and it's just going to give you a little bit more control for your finals um, and obviously you can apply Photoshop filters and all that sort of stuff as well um, so it's pretty straightforward to do once you get your Renderman controls open you want to go to final um, and outputs and then you'll get um, some lists here um, up here is all the uh, all the different render passes that are going to be uh, rendered out um, and this little clap box here if you click it uh, it disables it so that means this RGBA pass is basically your beauty pass which is just your standard render pass and then we're going to add a bunch of passes underneath it uh, so we click this LPE button uh, tab here and we're going to add a diffuse uh, create output yep a specular uh, indirect diffuse indirect specular subsurface and refraction I think that's all the ones I want two three uh, yep, yep. Um, and you can leave those as standard settings um, just for the sake of this tutorial to keep it straightforward I'm also going to be rendering out the um, beauty layer um, you don't necessarily have to do this if you're going to comp it because basically all of these are going to equal that uh, but I want it just as a point of reference uh, for this particular render so let's go back to globals um, and under common we're actually going to be batch rendering this out um, and uh, what you want to do instead of having it set to single frame set it to name number extension uh, and then just set your frames to one uh, start frame to one and end frame to one um, I tried to do this with single frame and I couldn't get it to work correctly uh, for some reason I'm not sure 100% sure why that is so uh, you'll have to forgive me like I said not an expert on compositing um, and that's really all there is to it for the setup um, so now you can just click batch render and it's going to render out uh, seven images and I'm going to click that now and then uh, we're going to fast forward to the end of that okay and our render is complete uh, if you're paying attention you would notice it counting um, up to 100% in this box down here you can also click this uh, before you start rendering uh, and the script editor will show you uh, a line of code for or just a line uh, note for every uh, percentage tick that it goes up um, so where do we find the rendered out images well I should have mentioned this at the start but uh, make sure that you've got a project set um, and the scene saved and that way it's going to give you um, a name um, and then it's going to allocate it a number um, when you 
render it out. So I've already navigated to where this um, where this project is. Uh, so you can see here, this is my projects folder for this passes tutorial. Under render man, um, you'll see a couple of, I've been testing it out so you won't see these. Um, but uh, the last one I rendered was this one here. So we'll go into this and then we'll go into images and you'll see I've got all the different passes um, rendered out. So I'm gonna drag these into Photoshop now and um, we will have a look. Okay, so this is our beauty render here and you'll notice that the alpha has been uh, converted to a transparency. But the problem is on all of our other ones it hasn't. Um, and I can't figure out why there is no alpha being applied with these um, render outs and I can't find a good way to apply it. Uh, but there is a workaround for this so don't worry. So um, we're just going to move this one off the screen for now. And we're going to merge all these render passes together and I'm going to show you how to get uh, get it so it, it looks like uh, this image here. So we're going to start with the diffuse, that's going to be our base layer. Uh, and then we're going to drop the indirect diffuse over the top of it. Uh, but as you can see, it just covers it completely. So we're going to get around that by changing the layer style to linear dodge add. And then if we just line it up, you'll see that the black isn't um, appearing over the top of it. Um, without getting into the nitty gritty of it, linear, linear dodge um, add is just going to annoy any value of zero um, in your image. So that's why that's not becoming visible. So if I do that again and move this around, you can see that only the, Im uh, only the parts of the image that have got um, a value higher than zero are visible. So I'm just going to continue to do that with each of these layers. I'm also going to name them as I go because that would make sense. Okay, so we've got our image here completely comped together. Um, and you can see if I bring this other one back in um, and I just drop in a black background behind it, I'll need to convert this to 8-bit, otherwise I won't be able to do a fill. Um, so if we just look at the two, Fit them in together. That is identical. Uh, so you see that solved the problem of the alpha. Uh, now, what if you want to get rid of the background? Um, well, because we re uh, we rendered out this beauty layer, um, it's actually given us the alpha anyway. So if we drag this in, uh, yes, I want to proceed. Okay, I'll just line this up roughly. Um, also, I've got snapping on, uh, just so you know, so that makes these easier to line up. That's why I'm just dragging them in. Um, they're just snapping to the layers underneath because it knows that it should fit within the um, overall composition. Um, so we'll take that. If I control click on the image, uh, preview there, and then control shift I, it's going to select the inversion. And then I can just go through each layer and delete um, the parts that I don't want which would be the alpha layer essentially. I can delete that um, and then if I do that you can see that I've made the uh, made the background disappear. I'll just duplicate that so it's unlocked. Then I can add a black background behind it if I go to 8-bit. Alright so that's it all comp together and then from there you can make any adjustments that you would like say for instance want the specular to be you know uh, lower value I can do that subsurface etc um, I could add a um, hue saturation to it and you know make some adjustments to the color and that sort of thing as well and that's that's a completely different tutorial uh, that I probably will never do um, because this is this I don't really do much Photoshop stuff on this channel. But hey, if you, if you got the if you want to ask a question, if you want to know something specific, I do know Photoshop pretty well, so ask away. I might be able to help you out with the tutorial there. Um, but there is one final pass that I haven't talked about yet, and um, this particular uh, scene that I set up isn't the best way to show it. So I'm going to switch to a different scene so I can show you. Uh, one way that you might go about doing ambient occlusion. 
Okay, so you may remember this fella from an earlier tutorial about subsurface scattering. He is back. He has got no eyes or hair. Um, I think I accidentally deleted them when I was working on this tutorial, so whoops. Um, but that's fine. We don't need them for this part of the tutorial. Now, I'm actually going to use a shader that I downloaded uh, from Lollipop Shaders. I'm going to put a link in the description. Um, and it's free um, or $25 for the full version. Um, I haven't got the full version yet, but I'm actually considering it because it's actually pretty useful, this shader. Um, and there are some limitations to the free version, which you will see momentarily. Uh, so before you go ahead from where I am now, um, you might want to go to the link that's in the description and download the shader and install it. The installation is very straightforward and there are some um, tutorial videos on their website on how to do it. So uh, follow that, install it, and then um, pick up from uh, where you left off right here. So we're going to go to render settings. And I'm just going to do this in IPR mode. Um, so with it installed, you'll get this lollipop shaders thing, uh, which is going to be the ambient occlusion. And uh, I'm going to show something off here. The, I'm going to set the max samples to 200 to prove how fast the shader is, because my God, this is a high poly scene. I, I didn't even do any displacements or anything on this one. It's just like 250,000 polys. But uh, I'm going to do an IPR now and just talk over the top while it's rendering and you will see how quickly it comes together it'd be a little bit slower um, because i'm obviously recording a video so my computer's having some memory taken up uh, but um, this renders up really quickly but you can see for an ambient occlusion there's one major problem uh, with the preview and with the final render is that it is red instead of grayscale um, you can get a good preview of what it should actually look like by going to channels and luminance, and that's basically what your um, ambient occlusion is going to be. Um, and then you could just export the single map out in the same way. Um, so if you had your path tracer set to lollipop shader before you did your beauty pass, your beauty pass would come out as a um, as an ambient occlusion. So it'd be easier to just do a single uh, beauty pass um, with this path tracer. Uh, with path tracer set to lo this lollipop shader just do one of those and then do all your other passes separate plus your normal beauty pass as well um, so yeah we're about 30 seconds in and he's already looking pretty well rendered um, and obviously there's there's no texture information there it's just the shadow information but I've got to say I'm super impressed with how well this shader works um, and I'll probably buy it over the week and add, and, add, and add it to my arsenal. And they've also got some other pretty good looking shaders on their website. So uh, I do encourage you to check them out. Um, I'm not being endorsed by them at all, but um, I just I like good things. And when they're good, I'm happy to uh, recommend them. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is um, to the tutorial. Uh, so hopefully this has uh, answered your question, Ron. Um, and if you do have any further questions, however, you can always add them in the comments and um, I'd be happy to look into answering them for you um, or posting a tutorial at a later stage. Um, I've got some busy weeks coming up though, so um, my tour tutorials might be a little bit shorter uh, going forward, but they will still be coming once a week at least until unless I think of some really quick ones to do in the meantime. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this one and hopefully it's helped you out with doing some comping into Photoshop. If you've enjoyed it, uh, let me know in the comments uh, or if you've got any questions. Hit like if you've liked it because it will help other people find it. And um, and yeah, subscribe if you haven't already because uh, like I said, I do a tutorial every week. So um, I'd be happy to see you every week for a new one. But until then, thanks for watching everyone and happy rendering. Yeah.